Last time, we introduced a marriage problem, which is about one-to-one -one matching, in which each man can match to one woman and vice versa. In this video, we are going to consider many-to-one matching, where one can match to many players from the other side. For instance, you have to have only one dissertation supervisor, but one professor may supervise many students. One of the most successful applications of many to one matching problem is to medical residents and hospitals in the United States. Let me give you some introduction. As you know, medical school students must spend some time at a hospital as a resident. In the United States, the match between the students and hospitals involves about more than more than 20,000 candidates every year and 3,800 residency programs. For the first half of the 20th century, the matching was decentralized. Candidates had to apply separately for their positions and hospitals were deciding themselves who to hire. The hospitals was complete with each other to hire a good candidate so candidates hired several years before graduation. There are some problems in the decentralized system. Students have less incentive to study hard because they already hired, and hospitals would end up with worse candidates. So that is a market failure. In 1945, the American medical schools agreed not to disclose information about students before a certain date. But in real life, a matching process can be very slow, so hospitals take time to search candidates before making an offer. On the other hand, offer hurting students still wait for some better offer. But with this no information disclosure system, they have less time to match, and that causes this bottleneck. So roughly there are two problems under no information disclosure. Pessimistic students would accept bad offer because it's too risky to say no. And optimistic students would end up with bad match or not match at all after just waiting for a better offer. So we have a market failure once again. In 1952, the various American medical associations agreed to switch to a centralized matching mechanism, which is called National Resident Matching Program. So students and hospitals submit their preferences. A matching is constructed by an algorithm, and then the matching is announced. It turns out the mechanism is equivalent to a version of a deferred acceptance algorithm. Now I'm going to only formally define this medical matching problem or many-to-one matching. So we have a set of doctors D and we have a set of hospitals H. And each doctor wanted to be hired by one hospital, but each hospital can hire several doctors. So we have some capacity constraint here. Each hospital H, there is a capacity QH that specifies a maximum number of doctors the hospital H can hire. As in the one-to-one -one matching, each doctor has a preference over hospitals and herself, which means the option of not being hired by any hospital. Since hospitals can hire several doctors, each hospital has a preference over set of doctors. So for instance, a certain hospital H prefers higher D1 and D2 over hiring D3 and D4. That could be possible. On the other hand, the hospital may prefer to hire just one doctor D5 over hiring two doctor D1 and D2. So basically, dealing with the preference over set is very complicated. We are going to have an assumption for simplicity. Instead of considering the preference of all the possible set of doctors, we are going to assume that a hospital has a preference over all doctors, as in the one-to-one -one matching. And then this preference over doctor induces 
a preference over a set of doctors. For instance, if this hospital prefers D prime over D, then the hospital want to replace D with D prime in any set of doctors that includes D. So for example, if a hospital prefers N to Bob, so this is preference over each individual doctor, then the hospital should also prefer to hire N and another doctor car over hiring Bob and Carl. Now we can define medical matching problem formally. So medical matching problem consists of set of doctor and set of hospital. And each doctor has a preference over hospitals. And each hospital has a preference over doctors. And each hospital has a capacity constraint QH. And a matching mu assigns for each doctor one hospital or herself which means remaining unemployed. And for each hospital, the matching mu assigns a set of uh, doctors within the capacity constraint. If the set of doctors includes the hospital itself, then the hospital is not going to hire any doctor. Now I'm going to formally define the basic properties. Individual rationality requires that each doctor should be matched to a hospital. Individual rationality requires that each doctor should be matched to a hospital. Individual rationality requires that each doctor should be matched to a hospital, which she prefers over remaining unemployed. Each hospital should not hire any doctor if they want. A pair of doctor and hospital blocks a certain matching if the pair is not matched in the current matching and doctor D prefers hospital H2 per current match and the hospital wants to replace another doctor D prime in the current match by the doctor D. And a stable matching requires individual rationality and no blocking pair and non-wastefulness. Non-wastefulness is a version of efficiency. It requires that there should be no vacancy unless no doctor wants to be matched to the hospital. So here we have an example. We have three doctors and two hospitals. The capacity of H1 is 2 and capacity of H2 two is one. So consider this particular matching D1 H1 and D2 H2 and D2 H2 D2 H2 and D3 D3 means unemployed. But this matching is wasteful because D3 can be hired by H1 and still H1 wants to hire D3 and that satisfies H1's capacity constraint. So this is not good. So now let's think about another matching here. So D1 and H1 and D2 H2 and D3 H1. This matching is not stable because D2 and H1 can be better off by blocking this matching. So D1 prefers H1 over the current match H2 and also H1 prefers D2 over D3. So D2 and H1, D2 and H1 can be better off by blocking this matching. Let's consider this matching D1 H1 and D2 H1 and D3 H2. This matching is stable because any blocking pair must include the three 
And D3 can be better off by being matched with uh, H1. H1 already hired two doctors and D1, D2 are preferred over D3. So D3 cannot block this matching. So this is a stable. So as I mentioned earlier, we can find a stable matching using deferred acceptance algorithm. Again, we have two versions of the uh, algorithm. One is a doctor proposing DA algorithm and the other one is a hospital proposing DA algorithm. I'm going to explain this algorithm with an example. In the doctor proposing DA algorithm, D1 propose H1 and D2 propose H1 and D3 also propose to H1. And then H1 is going to choose two doctors within its capacity constraint and reject just one, D3. And D3 is rejected by H1 and make another proposal to H2 and H2 receive a um, proposal from D3. So that's the end of the algorithm. So H1 hires D1 and D2 and H2 hires D3. If we use hospital proposing algorithm, H1 choose two doctors, H1 to D1 and D2, and H2 offer to D1, and now D1, since the doctor has got two offers and reject H2, and H2 rejected from D1 and make offer to D3, and now that's the end of the algorithm. Interestingly, both yield the same matching H1 higher D1, D2, and H2 higher D3, right? So that means doctor optimal stable matchings is equivalent to hospital optimal stable matching. Then that's the unique stable matching. So this is the quiz. So please find a stable matching and also try to think about how many stable matchings are in this problem.